Look at this traffic. How many cars do you see? 20 perhaps? And how many potential accidents? That's right, same again. And it's always someone's fault. But how do you determine who is to blame? How many times has this happened to you? Here's another one. We're cruising along when suddenly this character comes from the left and... Here's another car approaching an intersection. The driver looks both ways. The approaching car is about to turn left and... Well, who's to blame? Let's look at these accidents again. Maybe in this one you blame the fellow behind. Certainly he was following too closely to avoid an accident. That's probably the way the law will see it too. But was the driver of the car ahead in the right morally? Why did he stop suddenly? An emergency? No. He was looking for an address and almost passed it. Had he checked his mirror, signalled his intention to pull into the curb and slowed down gradually, he would have prevented a costly accident in both time and money, in spite of the tailgating driver behind. Here's the second one from another angle. Was it a split-second emergency in which nothing could be done? Well, when it got to this point, perhaps. But it was preventable. The driver from the left should have given way, but he didn't. He couldn't see the other car backing into the parking space. But you should have seen it and allowed yourself enough time and space to stop. Now, what about the lady at the intersection? The other car was approaching on my right with the left indicator flashing. I moved off because I thought he'd turn left, but he didn't. Circumstances like these have trapped many unwary drivers. In fact, the other driver had just negotiated a left fork and either the wheel turn was insufficient to cancel the indicator or the mechanism was faulty. In a situation like this, never presume. When a vehicle approaching from your right signals a left turn, always wait until it begins the manoeuvre before you move into the intersection. Always ensure your indicator has cancelled. Accidents are so common on the road but few drivers will admit even to themselves that they are responsible. Anyone or anything can be wrong before they are. This driver says, oh, I, I thought I could stop in time, but my brakes let me down. No, sir. You let yourself and others down by neglecting brake maintenance. Again, well, it was raining heavily and those darn wipers weren't working properly. What does he blame? Defective windscreen wipers. Did he expect his car to say, you better leave me home today. I feel sick in the windscreen wipers. It's the responsibility of every driver to make sure that his vehicle is roadworthy. Who was at fault often obscures what could have been done by either driver to prevent an accident. Prevention is a key factor. A preventable accident is one in which a driver failed to do everything he reasonably could have done to prevent it. And so potential accidents don't always happen because some of these people will try to prevent accidents in spite of the incorrect actions of others or the presence of adverse driving conditions. They're what we call defensive drivers because they drive to prevent accidents. Defensive driving involves techniques and practices that can be readily learned by anyone conscious of the need for better and safer motoring. Basically, you must have a thorough understanding of the traffic laws. Because traffic regulations are designed to prevent accidents and to keep traffic flowing as smoothly as possible. But it's up to you as a defensive driver to interpret these laws in the interest of road safety. 
Here's a good fast stretch of road. There are a few intersections, but so what? They all have stop or give way signs. Looks impressive, but can it stop a car? Watch. It didn't stop that one. And who can say where you might meet one of these reckless characters next? Signs are there for your own safety. Defensive drivers know that. Others may be foolish enough to ignore them, so always be alert. Be prepared to make adjustments for the incorrect and reckless actions of other drivers. Don't be like the legendary Albert Day, who died defending his right of way. Don't even think in terms of right of way, but rather as to who should give way. The defensive driver knows he has a responsibility that goes beyond the question of who was in the right, because his prime aim is prevention. He's alert all of the time and makes the adjustments necessary to prevent an accident. The tested and proven concepts of prevention and defensive driving together form an organized method of training through which you can improve your own driving and protect yourself and others from senseless waste and destruction on our roads.